forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. <laughs> Therefore I prayed, and understanding was given me. I called upon God, and the spirit of wisdom came to me. I preferred, I preferred her to scepters and thrones, and I accounted wealth as nothing in comparison with her. Neither did I liken to her any precious gem, because all gold is but a little sand in her sight and silver will be accounted as clay before her. 
I loved her more than health and beauty, and I chose to have her rather than light, because her radiance never ceases. All good things came to me along with her, and in her hands uncounted wealth. I rejoiced in them all because wisdom leads them. But I did not know that she was their mother. I learned without guile, and I impart without grudging. I did not hide her wealth, for it is an unfailing treasure for men. Those who get it obtain friendship with God, commended for the gifts that have come from instruction. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brethren, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let all men know your forbearance. The Lord is at hand. Have no anxiety about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honourable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learnt and received and heard and seen in me, do. And the grace 
and the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch of mine that bears no fruit he takes away, and every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already made clean by the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. If a man does not abide in me, he is cast forth as a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you will, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you. Feast day to all of you today. Um, we live in a world that takes itself too seriously. A criticism, not a fair one, that was often leveled against religion was that it made people miserable. But religion is largely absent from people's lives now, and I don't sense that people are happy because of that. There's something lamentably absent from society in general, and that is joy. Catholic England was Merry England because the Spirit of God dwelt in it, in her many churches, and in the lives of its ordinary Christian people. Now it's anything but merry without God, and it seems that if you merely raise an eyebrow these days, someone is going to take offense. Today, the church celebrates a humorous, charitable, obedient, and joyful saint, St. Philip Neri. His heart had been dramatically filled with the Holy Spirit as a young man, and it was this that enabled him to exert such a profound transforming influence on individuals, 
on the city of Rome and beyond, exemplifying the truth that the greatest catalysts for change in the world are not political powers or conferences, but holy people, saints. St. Philip was known for unpredictable behavior that surprised a great many people. But he seemed to sense the different ways to bring individuals to God. One man came to St. Philip's oratory just to make fun of it. But Philip wouldn't let his colleagues throw him out or speak against him. He told them to be patient, and eventually the man became a Dominican after, as it were, a slow turnaround. On the other hand, when St. Philip met a condemned man who refused to listen to any pleas for repentance, Philip did not try gentle words, but grabbed the man by the collar and threw him to the ground. The move shocked the criminal into repentance, and he made a full confession. It's clear that St. Philip could see the need for different approaches depending on the situation. It demonstrated his ability of discernment and his willingness to do what was necessary to bring others to God, one soul at a time. The virtue that enjoyed pride of place for St. Philip was obedience, which is inseparable from humility. He knew that humility was the only way for people to truly find and serve God. And his approach to teaching humility with two others was unique and often accompanied by a humorous side. It's obvious that much of human pride and anger stems from an overemphasis on self. And that can often bring in its wake an overly serious disposition. The Christian life is one of joy, and being too serious points often to pride, which is destructive. A proper balance is required. Our Lord was often serious, as there was much to be serious about. But he also spoke of his own joy, which he desired for his disciples. The devil has no knees, wrote a desert father in the fourth century. He cannot kneel, he cannot adore, he cannot pray, he can only look down his nose in contempt. And likewise, due to his pride, he cannot abide being laughed at. Some of St. Philip's lessons in humility seem harsh, but they were tinged with humor like practical jokes, and they were later related with gratitude by the people that they helped. His lessons were always tailored directly to what the person needed. So one member who was later to become a cardinal was too serious, and so Philip had him sing the Miserere, the great penitential psalm, at somebody's wedding banquet. When one priest gave a beautiful sermon, St. Philip ordered him to, gave, to give the same sermon six times in a row so that people would think that the priest only had one sermon. His approach to humility is one that is instructive. Each person on this earth who is created in the image and likeness of God possesses unique gifts that are to be used to further the kingdom of God. The danger for all of us is to rely too heavily on our own worth or abilities rather than a dependence on and gratitude to God for those gifts. For instance, St. Philip knew that a beautiful sermon and the gift of preaching could come with pride and an over-dependence on one's own, one's own insight or intellectual capacity. So in order to save that particular priest from these temptations and dangers, St. Philip taught him that his gifts in writing and delivering sermons rested with God. So it's amusing for us to think of this poor priest giving the same homily six times in a row as the parishioners looked on in confusion or boredom. But whether we are able to write, sing, build, paint, sculpt, 
deliver speeches, study, or do any other manner of things. We must remember that God has given us those gifts in his service and not our own. Pride in our own abilities often blinds us to the mission that God has given us and can impede our journey to holiness. Every, every single one of us has been embarrassed or committed some kind of error. A few weeks ago, I sought to avoid slow traffic in the city center by taking what I thought would be a quicker detour to save time. I ended up lost 10 miles out of York and my detour cost me an hour and a half. I was so cross with myself, as my brethren will testify. How do we react, or how we react to our misfortunes speaks volumes about our progress on the path to holiness. Do we become enraged at ourselves or others? Do we make excuses? In reality, all of us have these reactions from time to time. As we progress in the spiritual life, however, we begin to recognize our own limitations. We also accept that we will, mis that we will make mistakes, and so will everyone else. And as we come to this realization, we stop judging ourselves so harshly and others too, and we begin to laugh it off. We don't get angry, frustrated, or make excuses. We get to a point where we can laugh at ourselves and encourage others to do the same. Humility is a struggle for us all, most certainly. St. Philip Neri's unique and at times comical approach to the spiritual life and the fostering of this virtue can help, I think, each one of us on our own journey towards the Most Holy Trinity. If we are taking ourselves too seriously, then we need to take a step back and examine ourselves. We must be willing to accept our weaknesses so that we can fall on our knees before Christ. That takes humility. When we make a mistake, we need to laugh and move on. We're on a joyful path, not one of anger and frustration. May St. Philip Neri's joyful, humorous, and charitable example guide us to our Lord. Sancti Philippe Neri, ora pro nobis. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
As we offer you the sacrifice of praise, O Lord, we ask that by the example of blessed Philip, we may always give ourselves cheerfully for the glory of your name and the service of our neighbor, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, who by filling blessed Philip with the gifts of your grace, set him burning with the fire of love. Ablaze with that ineffable charity, he established our family for the benefit of souls, and by the example of his works, he completed the teaching that he gave to others for their salvation. You give us delight on this festival, instruct us by the model of his holy life, teach us by his words of preaching, and keep us safe in answer to his intercession. And so we, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. <laughs> To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Terence Patrick, our Bishop, and all those who holding to the truth and on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said to the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty, from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who, through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. And Mrs. we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Community. I think most of you are familiar with a new routine, but just in case not, if you would like to seek me on the hand, please come up first, leave a good pause then, and then those who want to come to receive on the tongue, please come up after everyone who wants to receive on the hand has received. Please continue to observe the social distancing and only return to where you are sitting now to make your thanksgiving.
blessed prayer. Having spread upon this heavenly delight, we pray, O Lord, that in imitation of our blessed Father Philip, we may always long for that food by which we truly live, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Carry the peace of Christ.